Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. In this video, I'm back in governance, risk and compliance or integrated risk management. And in this video, we're gonna talk about issue management. I had a question on the channel from Monica. Monica is one of the YouTube viewers and she was asking about what if she has an issue that's very similar to another issue how do you handle that situation? And I didn't know the answer, so I went and did some research. Here I am in the compliance workspace, and I've got all this great stuff about issues. I've even put out another video, I'll link to it up above, about um, how issues can now be related to more than one entity or more than one record type in ServiceNow's integrated risk management. So a risk you could be related to uh, several different entities, it could be related to an audit, a uh, control, a, um, a risk, all these different things. And that, I made a video that was pretty cool, but it didn't really account for the situation that Monica brought up where you've got two issues that are pretty much for the same thing. And when you fix one, it's going to fix the other. And the, the, the functionality, the capability wasn't really intuitive inside this workspace. So you're looking at the overview dashboard of issue management. Um, if I hop into and look at any of the issues in here, this is uh, all the, let's see, new issues. Um, there's not much I can do. I can get in and I can open an issue to view it. And once I'm in there, I can edit some details about the issue. And essentially what I'm going to show you in this video is how to group issues together or create a parent-child relationship between them so that you can close them quickly in mass all at once, right? So if we go to the details tab in the workspace, there's actually a section called issue grouping, which you can see right here in the menu. Um, but you can also just scroll down or click here and I'll hop you down there real quickly. And we have issue grouping. Now, um, this wasn't showing like this earlier, so I'm not sure what I did to pull up the wrong issue. Let's go back to this list view and let's open up one of these control attestation failures and see if I have better luck with that one. Um, yes, okay, so my fields are enabled there. So I've got a parent issue and an issue group rule. We'll leave this for another video um, because I don't know how that works. I can assume how that works, but I really don't know how it works. But notice I can grab a parent issue and associate it with the issue that I'm looking at. So the caveat with this is it's only gonna show issues that are part of a current group. Okay, so it's filtering automatically to say, here's all the issues, there's 42 of them that are part of a group that are eligible to be a parent. Well, that's not what I want. I want two separate issues that aren't part of a group that I need to group together. And unfortunately, um, well, fortunately you're watching this video, unfortunately you can't do it in this workspace that I've been able to find. What you need to do is hop out to the legacy UI and navigate to issues. So I've actually already typed in issue um, in my search box on the all menu there. And what I'm looking for is this under risk, under issues, I have all issues. Now, if I go back up and just scroll here, you can see I have issues related to audit, operational resilience, policy and compliance. So I could have gone to policy and compliance and gone to all issues. Um, so whichever app you're coming from, they're all the same issues at the end of the day. It's just depending on what app you're using, you might want to go there differently. Now we were just looking at those ones. I'm going to actually, um, I can't search in this, so let's actually change the name. Can I search for text? There we go. I saw HR uh, applications, so let's just search for HR. And I should get a bunch of ones with the name HR in the middle when that pulls up here in a second. There we go. So I've got the HR onboarding, HR case management, HR database. So let's just take these top two, right? HR onboarding has an assessment failure. One's new, one's analyzed. They're both assigned to Val. Kind of like Monica's situation, right? She had two issues that were assigned to her. When you're in this interface, you can check the boxes on the rows for those and then look up here in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to go to, um, I think I just highlighted something I didn't mean to. I'm going to go to actions on selected rows. And that's where this little feature comes in that I didn't know about for grouping and I get a little dialogue to create a new group. Now I can add it to an existing group or I can create a new group and give it a name. Uh, we're just going to call this demo for YouTube like I do everything else that I demo for YouTube and it's going to grab all the associated stuff. I can give it a description. It's going to assign it to Val. Click OK and essentially what it does is it creates another issue. So now we have three issues but this issue that it's going to create is a parent issue to the two issues that I just selected. So now that I have my parent issue right there, if I scroll down, I should see under issues, it's probably still working in the background. In fact, we've got a little um, banner up here saying grouping issues is in progress. This may take some time. So I'm going to scroll down here. There's still nothing here. I'm just going to refresh this list. And now there's my two issues that I checked the box for. So now I have three issues, one parent, two children. 
And what's nice is if I close this parent issue, closing the parent issue of the group, and any other information I put in is going to pass down to those children. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm probably going to be prompted for maybe some required fields that it didn't fill out. Let's see. Um, let's see, waiting. We'll just wait for that to reload. There we go. So, uh, oh, I didn't change the state. Um, I just put the description in, hit save. So that's actually performing as good. Everything's still open or analyzed down here in the bottom. So now let's change the state to close complete. And now we've got our required field that just lit up. So it needs an issue manager. We'll select able tutor. That could be your name as the issue manager. And we need a response. So I'm going to put in here, uh, we remediated this and we corrected um, the issue with the... Uh, what were these down here? These were onboarding assessment failures. Corrected the issue with the assessments um, being assigned to the correct person. I don't know, I'm making something up, right? You'd, you'd have a legit reason that you'd want Audible here um, and documented to the correct person, period. And now I'm going to close that. And what I want you to pay attention to is the state of these two children incidents. I'm closing the parent, and it's going to go ahead and update the child incidents and close them. So my parent incident up here, I'm sorry, parent issue, I said incident, parent issue is closed complete. If I scroll down to the bottom, notice my child issues are closed complete. So that was some time saved for me, would be for Monica as well. Um, and then in this, I have the information about the resolution. So notice it says response was remediate and explanation. Um, so everything's good there. So it passed down the documentation that I needed for that. So that's this video. I hope it was helpful. Essentially, you can get some automation and some productivity increase um, improvements around handling issues in ServiceNow. Unfortunately, at this point, you can't do it in the workspace. Um, leave me a comment down below. Is that something you'd be interested in? being able to do that in the workspace because I might be able to put together something that would let you do it. Um, but if it's not a big deal and people aren't looking for it, I won't bother. I've got enough to do. But I wanted to get Monica an answer to her question. So I hope she found this video helpful. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody else who you think might be interested in managing issues in integrative risk management or governance and compliance, governance risk and compliance in ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.